Beetles. Being one of, if not the largest groups of insects on Earth, beetles come in a variety of shapes and sizes and inhabit just about every ecosystem on the planet. We typically think of giant beetles as living off in far jungles or atop remote mountains. But what if I told you there were giant beetles right here in the United States? My name is Jack, and I've spent my whole life traveling all over the globe to get up close and personal with as many unique and dangerous animals as I can. I'm willing to put myself on the line to prove these animals aren't the monsters people believe them to be. Today, I want to introduce you all to a close friend of mine, the largest beetle here in the United States, the Western Hercules Beetle. So, folks... <laughs> <laughs> Last night at the light trap, we had some cool friends show up. Uh, and uh, I think they deserve a little spotlight video of their own. So uh, hopefully I can maybe rustle up some uh, Hercules beetles for you all to see. <gasps> what is that? What is that? Oh, it's Mr. Western Hercules beetle right here. So we're going to showcase and show you guys all the absolutely fascinating things about not only the United States' largest beetle, but um, definitely one of our strongest beetles as well. So uh, we're gonna find a comfy spot to hang out and pull out these beetles to show you guys everything there is to know about the Western Hercules beetle. Now check this guy out right here. This is a major male Dynasties Grantii, the Western Hercules beetle. By length and oftentimes by weight, this is the largest beetle here in the United States. And they are prevalent in some of these nice kind of sky island habitats at this large size out here in Arizona at this time of year. Uh, so this was one of the main things that I planned my trip around was to come out here and find these absolutely gigantic Hercules beetles. These beetles are some of the coolest looking insects on Earth, and absolutely nothing can change my mind. With fantastic horns and beautiful coloration and patterning, it's no surprise these magnificent beetles are prized by entomologists and insect collectors alike. Now take a look at the size difference between these two males. So these are two very distinct type of males that we classify. This guy right here, much smaller, much smaller horn. We call this a minor male. And that is because he is minor. He's much smaller than this major male. Now we separate them into two groups because these horns, these classic Hercules beetle horns, what do you think they might be used for? They're used for sparring. In fact, you can see little scratches and scars all over the pronotum here, right behind this horn, from sparring matches with other males. These Hercules beetles are interlocking these horns, trying to use that nasal horn to flip the other one off of the tree so that they can get to the top to mate with the females. So when you're a minor male, it pretty much stinks because basically all these males do once they emerge is they fly out looking for mates and they spar with other males. So if you're not a big male like this guy over here and you're somewhat smaller, uh, chances of you being able to mate are pretty slim because males, the big males, they're the ones that fight and win. That's the, those are the ones that win those sparring matches. And so these minor males often don't get to pass on those genes. I like them all equally, but there's something to be said about these absolutely monster major males just being a click above the rest. Although not aggressive towards humans, these males can be quite touchy during the first few weeks of their adult lives. They don't live for very long, and they have to fight a lot of other males if they're going to be able to mate, so pick them up at your own risk. Sharp tarsal claws and powerful vice grip like pincers can definitely turn a beetle handling session into a trip to the band-aid drawer. So check this out folks, right here in my right hand I have the male, but look at the female. What major appendage, what morphology is she missing? She is missing these fantastic horns. That's right, these females, they have no need to spar. They're the prize, so to speak, at the end of these battles between the males. They have no need for those impressive horns in order to fight other males. 
In fact, these females are robust and strong and full of eggs. And they have an important journey to make. After the mating season starts to die down, these males that have mated, they've served their purpose. They almost get super hollow and weak, and then they just die. But these females, she still has an important job to do. She'll fly around looking for suitable logs or hollow trees to find suitable areas to burrow in and lay sometimes up to 30 eggs, which is crazy. They can lay even more than that in some cases. So these females have that crucially important mission of sustaining these beautiful beetles in their natural habitat. These animals take about two, sometimes even three years uh, to mature inside of rotted wood. That's what they feed on as larvae. So it takes quite a lot of time in some suitable habitat in order for these beetles to become these impressive imago, these adult beetles that we see right here today. So we have all these lovely, beautiful female Hercules beetles to thank for that. Thank you so much for uh, being able to see this population of fantastic beetles to see here in the Southwestern United States. It is so awesome to see these absolutely gigantic beetles here in the United States. We're not in a tropical country. We're not in a far off distant jungle. We're right here in the beautiful kind of sky island habitats of Southern Arizona. And that's where these beetles are prolific. Have you ever seen a beetle this large? If you like learning about our largest native beetles, check out this video I filmed on one of our largest native tiger beetles. These massive tiger beetles dwarf most other species and are wicked cool. Click the video card or check out the video comments to find the link to this video. Enjoy. These have got to be some of my absolute favorite insects to encounter here in the United States. Let me see, they've got these massive freaking tarsal claws. Oh, like fish hooks digging into your skin. But I'm gonna see if I can get one to crawl onto my face because isn't that kind of sharp fish hook sensation something you want on your face? I mean, folks, I'm not even making it up. This is as hard as it is to get one of these to crawl off of your hand. Oh, he's got my lip. Oh, 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 oh. Mm, my mouth. I want the sun shot. I want the sun shot. I can't talk anymore. This was a horrible mistake. This was a terrible idea. <laughs> My mouth is free. Wow, folks. This is a powerful beetle. Oh, ow. <laughs> Ouch. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Wow, that is, uh, that is intensely painful. Definitely worse than the tarantula hawk. But uh, that is just to showcase. Oh my God. Oh, oh my gosh. Get. Oh. Wow. I don't think I'll be doing that uh, anytime soon. <sighs> wow, that'll really wake you up. But uh, yeah, as you can see, these animals aren't aggressive or anything, but they, uh, they're they very strong. <laughs> these are some of the strongest beetles on earth. Obviously, Hercules beetle. Uh, they are in that, that genus Dynasties. And so these are related to the huge Hercules beetles I filmed back in 2018 in Costa Rica. Same genus. These guys are just little cousins to those massive beetles you can find down there in Central and South America. Despite their formidable appearance, as adults, these beetles are vegetarians. They feed entirely on the juices and saps of plants, primarily from trees. They use their sharp mouth parts to kind of scrape back the thin bark on newer branches in order to kind of suck the liquid and water and juices directly from the plants. So those horns, once again, they're just for fighting. I know they might look a little intimidating, but we don't have anything to fear. These can't sting. They don't want to bite you. They don't even want to be near you. They just want to mate before their short adult lifespans are over. So all we have to do is take a step out of their way and let them do the things that they're here to do, which is 
to create more lovely little Western Hercules beetles. Literally, this is one of the coolest insects you can find here in the entirety of the United States. Our largest native beetle. And uh, this was a dream come true for me. My first time seeing this species alive in the wild. There's just nothing that matches that. We were so excited to finally have a successful night at the light trap after a few kind of dud nights. And uh, I'm glad that uh, we didn't quite miss the season of these impressive beetles here because oh my gosh, these are fantastic. Look at these, they're so cool. They're so awesome. But uh, we're gonna let them uh, relax. Daytime is their downtime. Look at those two males, crazy variable as well. Some really awesome kind of uh, coloration, even in just two males of the same species. So unique, so awesome, so fantastic. So we're gonna let these guys chill out. We're gonna let them relax. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. So I still am feeling all those little itchy, sharp feet that were stabbed all over my face, but I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the strongest and largest beetle here in Arizona and, and the largest here in the United States because this has been a fantastic adventure and I'm glad that we were able to include you all. So my friends, that's really all I've got for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, but if you didn't, then I hope I can leave you with this. The world is full of some fantastic and amazing, unique, and cherished life forms, much like these ones. And you may not like the creepy, crawly, or gigantic, beetly organisms of this planet, but they're here to serve an important role. These animals are priceless in helping break down rotting wood here in the Arizona Sky Mountains and other habitats here. And they're also pivotal and delicious food for many other species that prey on them sometimes as adults but oftentimes as delicious nutrient-rich larvae so next time you see maybe a big creepy or even scary bug like this don't freak out but ask yourself i wonder what important role this animal is serving in its respective ecosystem because there's a lot of cool stuff about the creatures of the unseen world so thanks so much for tuning in today, folks. I hope to see you next week. And until then, take care of yourselves and I'll catch you next Friday.